Let's go, what is happening? Welcome back to a brand new video on the DC5 Turbo. So today we're still prepping things, we're getting things ready. So we know that when this car gets started and when the turbo gets put on, we have done everything possible at our best ability while the car's off the road. So massive feedback on the videos and that you lot are loving it. I'm enjoying doing it. I wish I could do like two, three videos a week, but unfortunately we're staging them out one, maybe two videos a week. So yeah, uh, less talking, more action. Cause I hate watching videos where people talk shit for ages. So we're just going to get on with the video, get on the spanners and let's go. So three, two, one, let's go. So you're going to notice something massive straight away. And I hope you can tell, do you know what? I did want to be different, but you know, I wasn't happy with the quality and I was making the car look crap. So we've gone for the standard bumper and do you know what? I think it looks beautiful, man. Honestly, like I have missed the uh, standard front bumper. So I'm going to insert clip now if you haven't saw me on social media. So three, two, one. one. Okay, today, today, no one wants it. I can't be bothered to keep it in the garage anymore. So fiberglass, it's a no from me. This is hurting me now. You know what, it wasn't something I took easily, easy. I've tried to sell numerous bits, induction kit, exhaust, all in the loft, front bumper. Someone said, yeah, I'll give you a Greg's for it. And you know, what? I was like, I'm gonna smash it up anyway. Like, it was cracked, it was broken and it was chipped. And I was like, you know what, I'm not paying to get it redone again to damage it. So put the standard one back on and we smashed the other one up. So I didn't do it for long because I didn't, literally I was gonna smash it up anyway. So I thought, you know what, might as well get a cheeky reel out of it. So yeah, standard bumpers back on. I did check the uh, like I did check this bit here, um, and I think there isn't actually too much size-wise. I think it's like half an inch, if that. Because obviously, I want as much cold air getting into the intercooler as possible. Because obviously, the more cooler air, obviously, the better the car is going to run. I've saw numerous people putting number plates in front of the intercooler, and I think, what are you doing? You're just gonna your car's not going to get that air that it needs to run properly. So, yeah, standard front bumpers on for now. Um, to be fair, it could do with a front end respray, really, because the bonnet's a bit shit, uh, the roof's crap. Just give it a nice little tidy up, do you know what I mean, for when I sell the car. It's not crap, it's just looking a bit tired. 20 year old car, needs a bit of a respray. So yeah, we're gonna whip the front bumper off and uh, yeah, let's show you what we're doing today. So let's go. Cause the whole world outside, sun and sky, a curl in my ride, head in the sky, we're gonna make it to each other. Right, so, might as well show you this anyway. So, the ECU has come back, so JKL's uploaded a base map for me. Um, so, when everything's back in, it should be able to start under its own power. So, hopefully when everything has arrived and we've got everything, we should be able to start it, check for leaks, check for anything like that. So, yeah, just in case you didn't really understand, like obviously because my ECU, the new K Pros, you can like send it over via an email, and you could literally go on your computer and upload the base map to the car. So obviously, my thoughts were when the car's mapped, well, when the car's turboed, obviously it's gonna have new injectors, it's gonna have a turbo, so the car's gonna be like, well, what's going on? So it's not gonna be able to be ran. So when I come to get it mapped, I'm gonna have to pay for a trailer, get it trailered, which means more money. So. I've literally paid 50 quid for a base map, 50, 60 quid for a base map. Um, so obviously I'm gonna be able to drive the car, obviously not send it, um, but it's gonna be able to move under its own power. Um, and then we'll know if there's any leaks, any coolant issues or anything like that, that I haven't done correctly. Um, so yeah, it saves me hassle. And at least I know for my, when I do book it for mapping, I go, right, I can make sure everything's sweet. Um, so obviously some people are saying I'm bodging this. I'm definitely not. I'm trying to do my absolute best. I know back in the Astro days, maybe in the Megan, um, but these Hondas literally a 12 mil and an eight mil and a 10 mil. You can take everything apart. So yeah, um, trying to do everything properly. So yeah, I'm just gonna whack the ECU back in there. Um, then I can put the glove box in and just make the interior that little bit better. So uh, yeah, uh, let's go. And then we've got uh, some new pod. I think this is gonna be like a go off the brake boot. Uh, and then we've got some, some lines to run from the blow off valve and all that kind of stuff. So that's all good. Um, yeah. And then cobble boxes. And James, when you're ready, come get your rocker cover. Cheers.
Right, so it's literally going to plug straight in, I believe. The two on the left, one on the right, and then it's literally just a couple of eight or ten mils. Um, so it holds it to like the bracket, and then the bracket attaches to the car. So yeah, it's a uh, pretty straightforward. I'll show you when I've whacked it up. Big shout out to Scott for giving me this Mac tools. Oh yo, my first flexi head uh, ratchet. So let's get her on. Right, so we're gonna whack the subframe up now because I think we can pretty much get away with having the subframe up for the exhaust and downpipe and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this has been a bit of a knobhead to actually get into place. So just buy some WD-40 on the hard race front engine mount, um, and then we're gonna get under the back and we're gonna like try and evenly raise it into place and then uh, bolt it up. So yeah, look at the bolts. We get under and uh, we're just lining up the front because that hard race mount is so stiff subframe just doesn't want to go up so well, i've got two jacks cheers my brother um and we're just guiding it up so it's even and then hopefully just get the bolts so pretty self-explanatory really um but if you've put the bolts off in an order just make sure you put them back together and uh you'll be sound we're all right scott yeah all right sam i'm miles off on this side now Right, so uh, we're getting onto the engine mount now. So what we've done, subframes have all been put up, anti-roll bars in place. Um, we've got a piece of wood on a jack so we don't damage the gearbox. Um, and then we're literally just taking the engine mount out. So see how easy I did that. You didn't even see me on the spanners and I got it out. Um, so we are gonna upgrade this and we've got a few more things to do as well, so. Uh, I need to undo that, Scott. That mounting bracket there. So one, two, three. Um, and we've got some things to replace. Video in yet, Tom. Mm -hmm. Lovely job, Lee. Let's take these out. <clears throat> Where'd you get the easy yeah, bolt? Scrap man just took a bolt. <laughs> Hang you out if you see it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Right, so hybrid racing, because I'm suffering with this second gear malarkey, we're just upgrading everything. Um, so, as the video says, I believe it's one, two, three. These are like the tent springs, so apparently the original ones uh, get compressed over time. So yeah, we're replacing those three. So, see how we get on. Time, I think it's wise to do one at a time, innit? So literally 12 mil, Milwaukee, and then literally this little spring here do you know what i don't even know if that's an oem one or what but it looks pretty small to me compared to what i saw so i don't know if that's been done you know disappointing again right so as you can see they're exactly the same well that hybrid racing one's just a tad bit bigger so yeah i wonder what the difference will be so let's whip these out Right, so literally, that's his arm. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, 17 mil. And then obviously got this one here to go that way, yeah? And then obviously we've got to locate that into there. So I'm guessing, uh, bring the gearbox up, yeah. What's that for buying? That did his first piece. So now to do the springs, uh, I've literally undone this bolt here, these two here, which like kind of connect this bit here, because we need to move that out of the way. Undone the pins, slid them out, so we can hopefully after we've done this, move this out of the way. And then the bit we need to access is this this little bit here. So I'll do undo these, move this out of the way, and then I'll show you what we're working with after those are out. Subframes there. Well, we're not using the Milwaukee, mate. We need that extension bar. So that one, that one, that one, and that one, I believe in it. Just four, yeah? yeah. Oh, fucking hell, I got it off. Right. Is it supposed to not? Does it pull out or what? That don't pull out, son. You sure?
Okay. Right, so we're trying to yank on this now and it's not coming out. So uh, our mechanic has forgot that there's a, there's a little Allen bolt here that basically holds it into place. So we're going to undo that and hopefully this should pull out the way. So let's go. It's been took out there. So theoretically now. Whee! Lovely jubbly. Would that have gearbox all, all over it now? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Let's get a marker for that. <laughs> right. So you got apparently it sounds like a dog toy. <laughs> and then what you gotta do is get uh, apparently just literally undo that bolt there and then this kind of comes out the way. So you got your spring there, this one here, which has got a bit of movement in, and obviously that one that's compressed down, so yeah, both of them two have got to come out, so what about 10 mil in it? Oh man! Oh god, that is loose in it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got this dodgy fucking Mac tool thing. That's why. Oh. Is it gonna fucking? Yeah, it's gonna shoot so hold it. How bad? Like, not like a shock absorber, is it? Will any fluids? Which one you got first? Small one. I'm going to have a look. Right, so. Look at the difference. Like, that has definitely got a lot more resistance than that one, so. You want to feel, Scott? No, not asked. No. That one on there, like that. And then the big boy. So, big boy. Yeah, there's, there's not like, loads and loads, but definitely a bit more resistance. Like so. Sure, it's not for that top one. Well, was there a top one like that still? Scott. Right, so we've run a thin bead of sealant around this, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to brush it on nicely with my finger, um, and then that's it, really. Don't want to get none in the uh, inside the gearbox. Nice thin little bead. That's what we do. Right then guys, that is pretty much it, you know. Uh, the rain is absolutely killing us. I just hope this hasn't gonna, isn't gonna mark the paint. But yeah, new gear sucks in. I am thinking about getting the hybrid racing ones. Obviously, so now we've got everything fresh and brand new now because obviously when it was jumping out a second, we don't want none of that anymore. So I think the last thing to do really is either uh, change these things and if it still jumps out a second, then there's a problem with the gearbox. Hopefully not. Um, so yeah, uh, all that is bolted back up, three bolts for the brackets, uh, this has all been put together with sealant, sealant in there, that's been nipped up, all this has been done up, so yeah, it's been a successful day I think, um, I'm just going to try the shifter now, see if it feels any different, well, let's see if it feels any different, whoa, jeez, wow, that is so much different, that, that is crazy, oh that's, that's nice that is, yeah, that, that feels loads different than that does. I can't believe how different that feels. That's mad. Right, guys, so unfortunately, the rain has absolutely killed us here. Um, it's just started pouring down now. And what are the odds of having time off work and it pissing down? 100% gonna happen. Um, so the gear selector, we've had the new uh, Speed Factory Racing springs put in, which makes it a lot stiffer. And obviously we put the new detent springs in. Honestly, this is really easy. Like I thought it was gonna be really hard. Once you get your head around it, pretty pretty easy, like straightforward. As long as you do that bolt up underneath the gearbox on the middle bit with the Allen bolt, um, it literally pops straight out. And then all it is is the case of compressing the spring, undoing the bolt, put new springs in, job done. So that was like a really easy and confident thing. So if you're not too confident on the tools, I definitely would recommend doing it because it's, it's pretty simple to be fair. Um, engine mount, easy peasy. Um, literally now, we're just waiting for bits. So. Uh, we've got an oil uh, catch can coming with iron lines for the rocker cover um, and then obviously manifold, turbo, boost pipes, intercooler, radiator, exhaust system and then hopefully we can go for mapping. So 
I'm literally up to date with videos, so I've got no videos created now. This is the last one you see now is what we've got. So hopefully this week we can go and get some more bits and keep the video series going. He's gonna feed me week by week parts. So hopefully by next weekend we have more bits and we can fit stuff. So literally, I did kind of want our videos stored ready weekly, but I'm literally running out of content now. So uh, yeah, right, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that madness. Uh, that's, all, that's all I ask for you. So, please continue watching the videos. And if you got this far, honestly, you're a Don. Um, so um, Scott, Tom, thank you so much for helping. I really appreciate it, man. Um, and yeah, I'll see you on the next one. So peace.